Have you ever received feedback and took only that one negative comment back home with you to dwell on it? You forgot that that person did actually also say positive things to you that day or in the past. Have you ever thought any of the following? Why does this always take me so long to finish? Or this will never turn out as successful as I wish? Or why do I never complete my to-do lists? Then you already suffer from two of the six cognitive distortions I will help you to finally uncover and deal with in this video. Psychologists call these two filtering and generalizations. The worst is that you very likely will not even notice that little voice in your head that is constantly playing tricks on you and that is shamelessly lying to you. Such cognitive distortions have a great potential to darken your mood, make you feel tired, lower your performance and in many cases lead to anxiety and depression. So how can we prevent this? As a first step, we need to become aware of these cognitive distortions that psychologists have identified, which you will likely suffer from. To do so, I will share six cognitive distortions of which you have likely experienced every single one without noticing. Try to see where those play out in your life. As a second step, you can then deal with them. To help you to do so, I will share a list of six actionable steps with you at the end of this video. These cognitive distortions can be referred back to well-known psychologist Aaron Beck, the founder of Cognitive Therapy, which later expanded to Cognitive Behavior Therapy. Business coaches also refer back to these methods to help clients grow immensely in their work and private life. Identifying cognitive distortions shall help you to see what beliefs and thoughts may slow you down and to work with those to get back on track. Based on Beck's work, David Burns came up with 11 distortions, of which we will explore six in this video. I will share the remaining five distortions in a second video for those who would like to get the full doses of personal growth hacks. If you like to get updates on new videos and mind hacks I post and appreciate the content I share, click subscribe and hit the like button to support this channel. I also share plenty of tips on how to hack your mind on my social media channels. As I will ask you to assess yourself throughout this video, let me know in the comment box below which of the following cognitive distortions you have experienced. This would be super awesome as we can then all learn from this. In order to get the most out of this video, download a self-assessment guide on my website under free resources. Look for the link in the description box below. The guide includes questions to answer during the video and a system how to organize your answers. This way you can finally catch and understand that little voice inside your head. This guide also includes more details about how to apply the six hands-on tools that I share at the end of this video. We learn much more by doing, so stop the video here, get that guide and something to write in front of you so that we can start. I have invited Amy for you who will experience these six distortions to guide you through a mental world that looks like most of ours. This is Amy, applause for Amy. Amy was actually not always as happy as she looks like here. She's been plagued by mental distortions that keep her from being successful at work as well as with her relationships. Let's follow her and dive into the inner workings of her and our minds. Remember when I said we often focus on negative feedback rather than the positive? In psychological terms, that means we filter. Amy filters today. She has just missed the deadline and does not notice that little voice creeping up in her telling her, I'm so incompetent and disorganized. How could I not finish my work in time? How can I ever be successful like this? The only thing she notices is that she feels bad and a bit like a failure. The little voice does not tell her that she has actually structured her work and time well over the course of the last weeks on many occasions. If you fall short occasionally, it is easy to ignore all of your past successes and focus entirely on the few instances that were not as successful. Amy is not done filtering yet. She shares her worries about not getting her work done with her partner who she thinks seems not to listen to her. As she feels not understood, she starts asking herself, is he falling out of love with me? As a partner, shouldn't he be supportive after all? That little voice inside of her makes her forget about all the positive things her partner has done for her over the course of the relationship, filtering out this particular moment. Negative filtering can be harmful and can result in a depressed mood, poor self-esteem and unhealthy pessimism. While it can make us feel depressed and anxious, if we already suffer from anxiety or feel depressed, it can make us filter even more, which makes the situation worse. 
Amy's inner voice, while harmful, does not stop here, but instead starts generalizing now. She thinks, why is he never listening to me? And why do I always need to initiate the conversation? And he always avoids conflict when I tell him to listen to me and never solves our problems constructively. Why does he become upset every time I try to talk to him about problems? Amy also starts to generalize when she thinks about her situation at work. My new clients will never trust me as I missed this deadline, she thinks. Okay, let's pause for a moment and reflect. Look at the first points in the self-assessment guide and write down how you filter as well as how you generalize using words such as always, never, every time and so on. You may likely also generalize behavior of people such as, for example, saying he or she is not a good listener or not a person open for feedback. If you find this hard, look at the several examples I gave in the guide of how you could possibly filter and generalize and see what relates to you. As you have done so, let's come back to Amy. Do you think you are a fortune teller and can read others' minds? Of course not, you may think. Well, I would challenge you and tell you that you indeed think you are able to predict the future and read minds and do so quite often. Psychologists call this the fortune telling bias, which also relates to the mind reading bias. While predicting the future and reading minds might sound magical and exciting, it can likely affect our mental health and slows down our success as those predictions are mostly not very magical. We all have experienced this bias and so has Amy. She not only thinks she can read her boyfriend's mind, who she thinks does not care about her, she also thinks she can read the minds of her clients and predict their behavior. Burns group these two distortions to think we know what others are thinking, mind-reading bias, and to think we know what they will be doing, fortune-telling bias, under a category called jumping to conclusions. Amy jumps from the situation, being her boyfriend not listening to her, to the conclusion that he is not interested in her. How do you make illogical links when you worry and play out future events in your head? Write down such a chain of thoughts. Start with the first worry and see what other worries linked to that come up. If too difficult, then look for examples in the assessment guide. Amy tries to fix what she thinks is already breaking and suggests her partner to go on a short road trip as little adventures together can help bonding, right? While she expected beautiful landscapes and a great day on the roads, this is not what happens. It starts to snow and Amy does really not like cold weather. She also did not bring the right clothes. As she feels unhappy now, she thinks the holiday must be ruined. She just wants to go back home and sit next to the warm fire in her living room. What Amy does is called emotional reasoning. She feels it and therefore it must be true. Let's say you feel worthless or not successful and therefore it must be true. Despite having in various ways demonstrated that you are worthwhile as everyone else, you remain convinced that you are somehow worth less. Or let's say you're angry at someone, you feel the anger, so you take that for granted that since you feel it, it must be something bad that that person did. Assess yourself. Think of the last time you had negative emotions and how they colored your beliefs about that situation. I have some common examples in the guide, such as feelings related to our appearance, such as weight or competence or social connections. See if any of those relate to you. As Amy is back home, she thinks she could start drawing something before she will go on with her work as this is an activity she enjoys a lot. As she starts drawing, she thinks she should better go back to work now. She should work faster and should not distract herself. How often does that little voice appear in you telling you what all you should do? I should be faster with this. I should have ticked off more tasks on my to-do list. I should get up earlier. I should get more customers. I should gain more money more quickly. I should eat healthier. I should spend more time with my friends or should spend less time with my friends, but more time with work. I should use my phone less. I should, I should, I should. And why we think we should do a lot, we're not helping ourselves this way. There's a reason why you did not progress with your work or spend more money. So what are your shoulds? As a final step, write those down. Think of different areas in your life and what all you think you should or should not do. Now that you have done the assessment of the six cognitive distortions, how shall you deal with them? I have come up with six steps that you can test for yourself. See what works best for you, but important, you have to apply them regularly. This will allow you to grow without struggling so much on the way. As a step one, increase self-awareness of thoughts and feelings. Well, you may say, I have just done that, haven't I? How well did you do so assessing your distortions just now? 
As I said, those are often unconscious and it's difficult for us to analyze them in retrospective. It's good to learn at first, but then you need to pay attention to your thoughts regularly. Do so over the course of the next week and extend the time if you can. You could pick one or two distortions that you try to catch, such as using generalizations or the word should, and notice when you do so the next time. You may at first mostly notice negative feelings. This is as feelings have longer lag time. Try to go back a step then and ask yourself, why did I just feel sad, angry, and so on? Write down your thoughts. It's best to do it right away. Maybe you can use a voice recorder or just take some notes or at least some mental notes. I would recommend to pick a time in the day, maybe in the morning or evening, to start writing down your thoughts in a journal. Select a quiet space and time to reflect your day and thoughts. Let's take a look at step two, identify patterns. As you notice more and more of your distortions, you may see that you have them in a particular area, such as related to work, relationships, appearance, and so on. Maybe if you solve that one inner issue that is so dominant, you may get rid of many distortions all at once. So how do we solve these issues or distortions then? Step three, put your distortions to the test. See how much that inner voice is lying to you. You may think, wait a minute, I do believe my partner or boss indeed never listens to me. It was not just once. Or I do think I won't get that promotion. This thought is not fabricated. Well, what our little voice tells us is mostly exaggerated. It does not mean, though, we should ignore it. Psychologist Sonia Leon Bormirsky once said, Optimism is not about providing a recipe for self-deception. The world can be a horrible and cruel place, and at the same time, it can be wonderful and abundant. So it's not about a glass being half full or empty, but about acknowledging both sides to then see which one you want to focus on. Approach people like your partner or your boss instead and try to verify if your thoughts are indeed correct. Some of those cognitive distortions may be actually helpful because they can protect you. Maybe your boss is indeed a horrible person or your partner is not the right one for you. So you shall not just shut down that inner voice, but start to get into a dialogue to see in which situation it wants to help you and in which situation it can stay with you as a warning sign, but is only allowed to talk as you think it truly has a point. Step four, rephrasing or reframing. As you now have done a thorough assessment of your thoughts, you can then reframe them and make them more realistic. For example, instead of saying, that person never listens to me, see how often he or she actually listens. Instead, you can say, he has not done so today or two times last week or last month. There may be a reason why the person didn't. You could also look into that. You can also rephrase and say, I am afraid my boss will not give me the promotion, but I'm not sure yet. Or it is raining, I am cold, instead of saying this weather is miserable. There are a number of suggestions how you can rephrase in the guide. See which fits for you. Step five, as you have identified, reflected and reframed thoughts, some of these thoughts may just keep coming up. You may want to dig deeper and ask yourself, why do I have these thoughts about my boyfriend or the anxiety related to work? Write them down, reflect and exchange with those people involved instead of trying to read their mind or to predict their behavior. Psychologists have identified irrational, deeply internalized beliefs that may explain why we have these thoughts coming up. They have further distinguished between different ways of coping, such as emotion-focused or problem-focused coping, which are topics I will prepare more videos on for you to explore yourself. Lastly, step six, social support. Well, this is not really step six, but this would be a step that you need to take if you think you cannot deal with your emotions anymore by yourself. And those distortions can be very much unconscious. If you experience depression, anxiety, or any other mental health challenges, it may be best to just go through these steps with a therapist in person. It is okay to see that we can't help ourselves. Psychologists are there to help you.